love riding my motorcycle, but sometimes I will just need a break. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at a chair that I think is gonna be pretty portable and comfortable that I'm gonna put on my motorcycle for those adventures. This I got from Costco here in the USA. It was $36.95 and it looks like a pretty nice chair. Let's get it out. Okay, the chair comes in this bag that looks like it'll be pretty easy to carry if you wanted to carry it over your shoulder. It's pretty compact. I would say the only downside I see to this bag, which might also be an upside, is part of it is made out of mesh. So I don't think this is gonna fit in any of the kind of bottle holder pockets on my, my test luggage on my bike. So if this is strapped somewhere on the outside and I'm going through mud or rain, it's likely to get the chair wet. But also if the chair was left out and got wet, it's gonna allow the chair to dry better. Okay, if you've ever had those portable chairs, you know what a pain they are to stuff into the end of a sack. One nice feature here is it looks like it has a full length zipper here to open up the side of the package and easily get the chair in and out of the bag. This is Cascade Mountain Tech. Now rolling the chair out, you find three parts. You find a headrest, that just Velcro's up here at the top part of the seat, and you also find the framework. So we'll start with the framework. I saw a few reviews that complained about the difficulty of assembling this chair. It doesn't look that difficult to me. I mean, they actually have bungee cords connecting each of the legs. These legs that have uh, the wider pieces at the base of them, those are the feet of the chair. I mean, here we go. I'm gonna assemble this chair one-handed. So it looks like I have the base of the chair completely assembled. Let's throw that down here on the floor. And now we just have to put together the pieces that are gonna hold up the high back part of the chair. Oh my gosh. Well, that part was easy. So it looks to me like the deepest pockets are gonna be these top ones. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to start is by inserting these back rails into the top pockets. Once inserted in the top pockets, just slide those all the way down in the pockets so it's tight. Now you've got this front area. Both of the front pieces have got kind of a finger pole that'll help you pull and stretch it into place and get it over this bar. Which obviously the first one goes on pretty easy. Okay, so for the last leg to go on, you're gonna have to apply some pressure and stretch it on there. So it's gonna be a process of pulling. Oh yeah, I see where they could say this could be difficult. So yeah, if you're not very strong, that could be difficult to get that last one pulled in place, but they give you a nice finger tug to pull with, and it's gonna take both hands and your arms and some strength. All right, there we go. That's what it looks like with it assembled. Now, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot three, 260 pounds, and I'm gonna try it out. I do believe the chair says it has a 250 pound weight limit, but I set it in Costco without any problem. All right, I'm in the chair and I love the high back design. I find that pretty comfortable. I don't have the pillow on it yet. Okay, the pillow has Velcro all across the back. Looks like you could put it in this lower position here, or if you needed to, you could ride it way up here to the higher position. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do is just put it on there as high as I can, because I know I'm tall. Not bad at all. I like it. Pretty comfortable, kind of semi-reclined position. For me, I can kind of rest my head back on the upper pillow. I think there's a lot to like about this chair. Okay, with the pillow in the highest position, it actually works for me. And I'm six foot three and have a lot of torso. And this is pretty comfortable. Uh, missing, it's missing armrests. I noticed that right off. I wish it had the armrests. I saw some advertised online that uh, were from another manufacturer that costs about three to four times as much and they had armrest. I don't know that I wanna spend that much for it. One feature I think I'm gonna like about this chair is it sets pretty high off the ground. Got a tape measure here. Yeah, so the front edge of that chair is almost 18, 18 inches off the ground. That's pretty high. Now, I did feel a little bit of pressure from this front edge on the back side of my legs. So we'll see how that works out after setting it for longer periods of time. All right, I already had a compact chair on my motorcycle that I was carrying in this Tusk um, tent pole bag. And let me show you this chair and why I purchased a new chair. 
Okay, here's what was in my tent pole bag. This was a backpacking chair I purchased at Walmart. It was only about $19.99, so I thought I'd give it a go. And last season, I took it to several outdoor concerts where live bands were playing, and I tried to set in it, and it had some issues. So this being the Walmart one, it's an Ozark Trail. So this Walmart chair was also a quick assembling chair with bungee cords going through the poles, and that was nice about it. It did go together quickly. Something I found very much a pain when I used this in practice were these small feet, they sunk right into the ground. So when I was out on the lawn somewhere, they would sink into the grass. And then as soon as you got up to try to lift your chair out of the hole, the legs would kind of fall off. So then I had to reassemble my chair and try to put it back on top of the ground again. All right, and here they are compared side by side. You can definitely see that this uh, smaller version and cheaper version is just lower to the ground. So if we measure it, yeah, you're just over 13 inches high, which by the time those legs start to sink in the ground, it feels like you're setting on the ground. So it's much harder to get in and out of, and it has very little back support for me being a tall person. While this other one from Costco has got these larger feet that hopefully are gonna keep it from sinking into the ground or even sand. So when I got it, I thought, hey, it's not bad. It kind of gives a little bit of support under my shoulder blades, but it would start sinking so quickly into the ground, it often became off-centered and just felt horrible. Uh, also, there wasn't a very good way just to, to kind of set up in it. You were reclining back quite a bit, at least I am. So I'm hoping the new chair works out a lot better. I like the high back and the headrest. Okay, here they are together again. Uh, again, the smaller chair. It's about 18 inches on the back of that from the seat up to the top portion. The taller chair is around 29 inches from the seat up to the top of the backrest. So as I went to pack up and put away this high back chair, I noticed that this back portion at the top has got sewn in a rod that's about 18 inches wide. So you won't be able to fold it down that direction while you're, you're doing putting it away. So how will it fit on the motorcycle? I think the most logical approach is going to be just to put it sideways here at the back and put it under the beaver tail. That's this flap here on the Highland bags, and it won't go anywhere. It'll be held in there nice. Doesn't stick out any wider than the bags on the side of the bike. I think it'll fit just great for motorcycling. I think this chair is plenty light enough as well at just 3.37 pounds. And packed in its bag, it's just 5 inches diameter by 19 inches long. It's by Cascade Mountain Tech, available at Costco. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot.